The idea of the electric car is no longer a foreign one. Manufacturers are making more and more of the things. Formula E, the world's first fully electric race series, has just crowned its first world champion. Even here in South Africa, where government can't guarantee a steady supply of electricity to your toaster, let alone a car, there are now a pair of them available. We drove the BMW i3 a while back on RPM and came away suitably impressed. The Nissan, quite unsurprisingly, is the more budget-friendly option, coming in at 100,000 Rand less than the i3. It offers a similar fully electric drive, and although it's down on power and has less impressive performance figures, at this very early stage of the electric game, it is still comparable in a lot of ways. Like an i3, for what you get, it is quite expensive. 486,000 Rand is what Nissan wants for the Leaf, and for me, that is going to be the toughest part of their job. Because even when you break down the savings you make in fuel costs, it is a whack of cash, and it is a difficult sell. A quick example, the same money could buy you a BMW 320D Sport. A full tank of engine ultra-low sulfur diesel will cost you 669 Rand and it'll get you 1,267 kilometers per tank, according to BMW, which is 53 cents per kilometer. To cover that same distance in the Leaf, using ESCOM's highest domestic tariff, will cost you around 8 cents a kilometer. Over 100,000 kilometers, the Leaf will save you about 45 grand. And it'll still be an expensive Nissan, and like all electric cars, it'll have things that you have to get used to, like the lack of noise and the lack of gear change, and the fact that pedestrians don't hear you and animals don't move out of your way, and the fact that it changes not only your driving style, but your whole psychology around driving. Which may sound a little dramatic, but what I mean is that you approach every trip you take with a sense of caution. Even with a full charge, you know you've only got a 195 kilometer range at the absolute most. Sure, fuel-powered cars also have a limit to their ranges, but somehow your brain tells you that running out of battery power is somehow far scarier than running out of fuel. Which is idiotic, because it isn't. Even so, you start concentrating on that range limit indicator more so than you would in a car with an internal combustion engine. You start planning your route to include more downhills. You start driving the car in battery mode because that helps with brake regeneration. And all in all, you start driving in a much more responsible way to stop that range getting anywhere near zero. Of course, the obvious reason for the paranoia is that your recharging options aren't nearly as numerous or as quick as refueling options are in a normal car. At home, using a domestic socket, it'll take eight hours for a full charge. There's also the option of stopping by selected Nissan dealerships for a free quick charge, which gives you a full battery in about half an hour. When you take away the range and the charging issues and the fact that your sensors have to get tuned to a whole bunch of other things while driving, the Leaf actually doesn't feel that bad. Take it out of eco mode, put your foot down and you find that it's got quite a bit of poke. That's because all the car's torque is available from just zero RPM. The downside to that surprisingly good acceleration is that it does drain your battery pretty rapidly. The 192 lithium-ion cells gives the AC synchronous motor a total output of 80 kilowatts and 254 newton meters. 0 to 100 takes 11 and a half seconds and top speed is 144 kilometers an hour. I was always a little skeptical about electric power because I didn't think that it was that much more efficient than petrol, but the difference was explained to me like this. A full petrol tank is 100% potential energy, but an internal combustion engine only gets about 20% of that energy thanks to losses in heat, friction and mechanical movement. A full battery is also 100% potential energy, but an electric motor can use around 95% of that because the system is so much more efficient. For all its futuristic drive, the styling of the Leaf isn't that far out. It's got a bit of a beak-like front end and the extended C-pillar taillights might take a bit of getting used to. And it is a little heavy set for a hatchback, but all things considered, it is quite normal. Besides the ridiculous branding that thankfully isn't available on customer cars. The same goes for the interior. In fact, it's a very well-specced space. Keyless entry, heated seats, Bluetooth, there's everything you'd expect at the price. There's also a lot of information being thrown at you, but I suspect that's to make sure you don't run out of battery power more than anything else. The space is good, the finish is decent, and there are some very nice details. 
Driving the Leaf or any electric car does take a bit of a shift in mindset, and owning one isn't the cheapest of propositions, but there is definitely something about them. What I like about the Leaf is that even though it is a brave step forward into the future of motoring, it's not completely outlandish or foreign. It's comfortable, it's well specced, it's got a decent drive. It may not be your best choice for a road trip and might require more maintenance than a regular car, but for me there's no doubt that the Leaf and cars like it are the way of the future. An 80 kilowatt electric motor provides decent acceleration and the drive is smooth and silent. A single speed gearbox and no emissions adds to the Leaf's efficiency. The Leaf is different but not unpleasant. It's well specced, comfortable and can cope with any driving situation. It is however still an expensive option and concerns about range and charging infrastructure will remain for some time.